The responsorial psalm of today reminds us of a basic tenet of our Christian faith. Our God is the God of salvation. Nothing else that God desires for us, it is our salvation. And one of the things or signs that we can look into as we hold on to God's salvific act is, in, is, is, is found in today's gospel. We hear and we see Jesus freeing the woman from her infirmity. And God's salvific act is manifested in Jesus' act of curing, of restoring back the health, the status, the dignity of that woman. And by this, we see that Jesus' mercy and compassion prevails. Unfortunately, undeniably, there are instances and there are those who would question this gesture of restoring back someone's health, someone's status, and dignity. They do so because, because of their too much preoccupation on the legalistic views and arguments. And too much of such views or arguments, that is, of doing what is only legal, we or it can hinder us to accept God as the God of salvation. And for that matter, we cannot be capable enough of spreading God's message of salvation. My dear friends, it is good that today we are reminded by St. Paul in today's first reading. And I quote, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through which we cry out, Abba, Father. And the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Therefore, let us truly live and be heirs of God's kingdom and truly be God's children by participating in Jesus' act of salvation that those who suffer may feel comforted and be restored and received back their dignity as human persons created in the image and likeness of God. And that we truly express and show to others God's mercy and compassion through our works of charity. And by doing so, we claim that God is truly the God of salvation.